Hey you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. So I'm really excited about this experiment, something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Now, um, as you may know, if you don't, we have two breeding flocks. We have a breeding flock of buff Orpington ducks, and then a breeding flock of bearded silkies. And we've incubated before ducks and chickens, but I thought, could you incubate ducks and chickens together? Now, I've incubated chickens before, and I incubated ducks before, but I thought, could you incubate ducks and chickens together? Now, I read some conflicting information online, on online forums, on Facebook. Some people have said, no, you can't incubate them together. Some people said that they had no issue incubating them together. And that the reason why they were maybe having issues is because ducks require a higher humidity than chickens to hatch. Um, another factor is that chicken, chicken eggs typically hatch at 21 days, whereas duck eggs hatch at, I believe, 28 to 35 days. So that kind of adds a little bit of a kink in kind of making it a little bit more complex. So um, I may end up doing two um, experiment runs. But the first experiment, we're just going to start all the duck and chicken eggs at the same day and go from there. But today is day one and I've got, I believe I've got nine duck eggs and I've got, I think, 15 silky eggs. So I'm going to pretty much just go through the process and keep you guys updated on it. Um, so during the first 18 days for chickens, now I'm going to just run the humidity and the temperatures that you would for chicken eggs. And then in the end, the humidity will get bumped up like you would and then we'll keep it up um, long after the chicks have hatched. Now during the first 18 days, you want to keep the temperature for a I don't know what it is for a stiller. I think it's for a still air incubator, you want to keep it at 101.5 degrees. And then the humidity, you want to keep between 40 and 50%. Now, um, I like to keep it at the higher end, closer to 50%. If I can keep it at 50%, awesome. But I like to keep it in the high 40s, if possible. Our incubator, it's a little giant. Um, I've heard some conflicting information on these that they're, they're not the best quality. Um, we got this used. Um, for a low price, so I feel like if I can successfully do this in a cheap incubator, then you could definitely do this in a higher quality incubator. So, um, so far though, this incubator's worked pretty good for us, so I think we're going to have a pretty good chance that if this can be done, we'll be able to do it in this incubator. So, next update will be at between 7 and 14 days when the veins should start appearing and there should be some developmental activity inside the eggs and I can candle them. So it's day 14 and I'm a little bit late getting to this. I've been super, super busy over the weekend. I really wanted to do this more in between 7 to 14 days, um, but better late than never. We're still going to be able to see that developmental activity, um, be able to tell, yes, they are developing. Um, the biggest things that we're going to be looking for are which eggs took, which eggs developed, and which eggs are duds. And the easiest way to tell that is you're going to see veins in the eggs that are that took, that are, were fertile and are, that are developing, and the duds are gonna be clear. You're gonna see nothing in them. So we're gonna go ahead and candle these eggs. It's called candling. We're not really sticking them over a candle. Um, they have a uh, little tiny candling flashlight that you can buy. I just use the flashlight, like a normal flashlight or the flashlight on my phone. These work just fine. Um, but we're going to go ahead and candle these eggs and see just how many have took and if this experiment is working. Okay, so we are going to be very quick about this. We do not want to keep them out of the incubator long. So we are going to pull them out, set them on top of the flashlight, and then put them right back. Now, any duds that we find, we are going to put set aside. All right, now we are gonna be very quick about this. So here's egg number one. And egg number one's kind of clear. I can see some veins inside. So we will go ahead and keep that in there. Egg number two. 
Ooh, that one's very full, very solid. So that one is a good contender. Two out of 15. Oh, another solid looking egg. See, I'm, I'm way late on this. Number four. Oh, another solid one. That's good. It's a good sign. Um, normally at day seven you would have seen veins, but seeing a solid egg is still a good sign. It means that they have either fully developed or are pretty much ready. Alright, so five eggs down. Another solid egg. There we go, you can kind of see it into it. That's solid right there. You can see it's dark over here. That's good. Six eggs good. Alright, so seventh egg. So I'm thinking that the first egg might have started to develop and may have later terminated. And the last silky egg. Oh no! This is a dud. This is what a dud looks like. There's no veins forming. There's nothing. It did not take. So we're going to set this one aside. Alright. So that leaves us with 12. So we had 13 silky eggs. That's how many we had. So that means 12 out of 13 silky eggs successfully took. So now to see the duck eggs. Now the duck eggs, um, these are the real ones because obviously we did the settings to the silky eggs. Now you see some cloudiness in there. That's good. Something is happening in there. There is some, there's the air pocket, but there is something going on inside that egg. That's good. So, egg one, good. All right, this one is pretty clear. There is something going on inside. You can kind of see some darkness there. Those might be some veins. So we'll give this one a chance. We'll keep this one in. Good dark. Something's definitely going on in this one. Egg number four. Oh look, look, you can see. You can kind of see some patch of darkness there that might be the embryo forming. Egg number five. Good, nice and dark. Egg number six, good. Egg number seven. And egg number eight. All right, so eight out of nine are looking very favorable. Now we do have this one, I'm not sure. So that is looking pretty good with only one that is a definite dud, the one silky egg, this one's a definite dud. We have another one that could possibly be a dud or it may have terminated in development. So far, I feel like we are having good results with the experiment. So that means we had, we have development in 12 out of 13 silky eggs that we had laid and seven, possibly eight duck eggs are developing well. So I'm looking forward to day 18 when we put these chicken eggs on lockdown. Now that's where it gets a little tricky. I'll see you then. Big day is finally here. It's day 18, that is lockdown day. And this is where it gets tricky because you're going to have to put the chick eggs on lockdown, but you're going to have to still rotate the duck eggs two to three times a day. So we are going to be, uh, I've got my pencil and I've got a measuring cup of warm water because we also on today have to bring the humidity up to 70%. So we're going to go ahead and do that now.
So this is where we will unplug the egg turner and take it out. Now because I'm going to be turning the duck eggs, I'm going to place them in the front so I can minimally crack the lid and turn the eggs. So the silky eggs are going to be going in the back. Now, I'm not going to bother candling them again because these all had appeared solid whenever I first candled them. So I'm just going to set them in and see what happens. Now either way we should get some successful hatchings with these silkies if everything went well because the rules that we are following are um, for hatching chicken eggs. So we should not have any issues. The duck eggs are the ones that are going to maybe hatch or maybe not hatch. So now to mark the duck eggs, I'm going to be putting an X on one side and a circle on the other so I know which ones have turned. So we're going to start off on circle. Alright, and so now that I've got the eggs set, I'm going to go ahead and add some water. Now I'm going to start off small because it's easier to add more water than it is to take out water. But we want it to be at about 70%. Um, for chickens it's 60 to 70%, but for ducks you want that high humidity, so we're just going to plan to be at 70%. So, alright, we'll go ahead and place the lid, and you want to put that sensor on top of the eggs and then secure the lid. So now we just wait for this to come up to 70% and then we will wait until day 21. Now silkies, because they're smaller, tend to hatch earlier. So we may get some silkies hatching in the next couple days. We've got our first pip. Second duckling to hatch. Come here, little one. It finished with its umbilical cord, so we're gonna get it in the under the heat lamp to dry. Second little duckling. Okay. Duckling number one, who has been bonding with us. Hi, little one. This one actually oh, is imprinted on no. us. Do you want to see the feather baby, Shiva? Well, let's put it back so it can relax, okay, buddy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good puppies. Keep it on its belly, Leon. Good girl, Shiva. Good boy, Bane. Alright, go ahead and put it back. Mm 